Hey y'all, Dustin here. This is College Football Chronicle, where we talk about the past, present, and future of college football. And I just wanted to make a fun little video comparing the most chaotic season in college football history, 2007, with the year of our Lord, 2021, and the season we are currently experiencing to kind of compare and contrast the two seasons statistically the best way I can, and to let you know why you need to really appreciate the last half of the season for the chaos it is almost ensuringly going to be. I have no idea if that's a real word or not, but it sounded good coming out of my mouth. Now, the 2021 season has been rife with chaos from FCS wins early in the season, top 25, top 10 wins, uh, and group of five wins over Power 5 teams. And those are the four categories that I want to focus on here. We'll run through the list for 2021 kind of quickly. These are all kind of fresh scores. You can pause if you want to look at each list individually a little bit longer. Um, but then the real fun is going to be kind of going back in time 14 years ago and looking at 2007. And it's just kind of giving a little glimpse into how different college football was and how not so different that season was from this one. So let's start looking at the 2021 season first, and then we'll compare it to 2007. First, we'll take a look at the top 10 losses from 2021. So the teams that were ranked in the AP top 10, uh, I have them ranked from, well, the rankings from 1 to 10. So the losing team is first. That way it kind of highlights the rankings better. So, of course, you have A&M's upset over Alabama. Purdue this past weekend upsetting Iowa. Uh, even though it was preseason, it does count. Georgia over Clemson, Oregon over Ohio State, and then, of course, Oregon being number three, losing to Stanford. You have a bunch of really close matchups. Penn State, Iowa, both in the top four. Uh, Notre Dame and Cincinnati, both in the top ten. And then, obviously, all the way down to number ten, BYU, losing two weeks ago now, I believe, to Boise State. Now, if we look at the rest of the top 25, uh, you know, starts off with number 11, Florida, number 12, Wisconsin, 12, Ole Miss, 13, UCLA, Arkansas, kind of goes down the list, Iowa State, it's hard to imagine them having been ranked a preseason top 10 team, number 15, Texas, 15, Virginia Tech, uh, LSU at 16 to start the season, losing to UCLA, uh, and it just, you know, kind of goes down from there. We got Miami of Florida, we got... UCLA, we got BYU on both sides of the column here, Texas and Oklahoma. So, you know, you see the list there. Uh, these are all games that you remember from the last seven weeks, so I'm not going to dwell too much on it. And now group of five wins over Power 5 conference teams. Uh, you have Bowling Green over Minnesota. I do include BYU as a group of five team because... They've never been in a Power 5 conference until, of course, when they moved to the Big 12 in a couple of years. So I do count them as a group of five independent, and I consider Notre Dame a Power 5 independent. Maybe there's some controversy in that. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, you have BYU over Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah, putting them 3-0 in the Pac-12 South division. Uh, even though they're ranked, Coastal over Kansas still counts as a group of five over Power Five. Fresno over UCLA was a big one. San Diego State also getting two wins over Pac-12 South teams in Arizona and Utah. SMU beating TCU, uh, UTSA beating Illinois. And the big one that might have the most ramifications through the end of the season, depending on how they do, is Western Michigan 44, Pitt 41. There were also eight FCS teams that upset uh, FBS teams that started with Eastern Washington beating UNLV in double overtime, East Tennessee State beating Vanderbilt, Holy Cross beating UConn, Jacksonville State on that pseudo Hail Mary play, uh, the walk off against Florida State, Montana notching a ranked win against number 20 Washington, Northern Arizona against Arizona, South Dakota State against Colorado State, and UC Davis against Tulsa. Now the fun part. Let's take a look back at the 2007 season and uh, just I'm going to go through each one because I think it's fascinating. So this may be a little bit longer than the 2021 portion, but eh, it's fun to look back. So the top 10 losses uh, through the first seven weeks of 2007, including number one LSU losing at number 17 Kentucky in triple overtime. This is the last time LSU visited Kentucky before this season where Kentucky also beat the Tigers. Uh, USC losing to Stanford in a huge upset, very similar to this year. Uh, Oregon State beating Cal. Colorado beating number three Oklahoma in Big 12 play. That is odd to say now, considering Oklahoma's off to the SEC and Colorado's in the Pac-12. Auburn upsetting Florida. 
Uh, of course, the big one, App State 34, number 5 Michigan 32, and arguably the greatest upset of all time. Yes, children, USF was at one point very highly ranked. They made it to number 2 this season, but they were number 18 when they beat number 5 West Virginia. Illinois upset number 5 Wisconsin. Kansas State over number 7 Texas. Yeah, there was a time where Texas was ranked in the top 10 and deserved it. Isn't that weird? Number 11, South Carolina beat Kentucky. Number 2, LSU beat number 9, Virginia Tech. Kentucky beat uh, Louisville because this game used to actually take place at the beginning of the season rather than at the end. That didn't start until Louisville joined the ACC. LSU beat Florida and eventual Heisman Trophy winning quarterback Tim Tebow. Michigan beat Penn State 14-9. And Maryland beat number 10 Rutgers. You are hearing and reading that correctly. Uh, This was a non-conference matchup as Maryland was in the ACC and Rutgers was in the Big East. So... Imagine telling somebody in 2007 that one day that would be a Big Ten matchup. To flesh out the rest of the top 25, you had South Carolina beating number 11 Georgia, Utah beating number 11 UCLA, number 6 Cal beating number 11 Oregon. This is a score that is almost identical to the one that happened this year when Cal almost upset Oregon. Oregon won 31-24 a couple weeks ago. You had Oklahoma over Missouri in Big 12 play, LSU beating South Carolina, Tennessee beating Georgia, Georgia Tech beating Clemson. This is the 2007 matchup between these two teams. The 2008 matchup between Clemson and Georgia Tech would be Dabo Sweeney's first game as head coach. Number one, USC beating number 14, Nebraska. Boy, does that seem like a different world. Number 12, Cal over number 15, Tennessee. Uh, Boston College over Georgia Tech. Unranked Alabama upsetting number 16 Arkansas on a last second game winning touchdown pass. Unranked Alabama beating number 16 Arkansas. That doesn't seem to make sense. Uh, number 22 Georgia beating number 16 Alabama in overtime. Fun fact I was at that game. It was my first conference game as a student at the University of Alabama, and Matthew Stafford broke my heart. USF beating Auburn in overtime. Syracuse beating Louisville. This was not an ACC matchup. This was a Big East matchup. Iowa upsetting number 18, Illinois, 10-6. Clemson's Labor Day win over Florida State being an upset. Number 7, Texas against number 19, TCU. Not exactly an upset, but TCU out of the, what were they, the Mountain West at the time, they were ranked, so that does count here. Oklahoma beating Texas by a touchdown. Weird, never heard that before. Penn State beating Wisconsin, just like they did this year. Uh, Miami of Florida beating Texas A&M. Illinois beating Penn State. Cincinnati beating Rutgers. Weird that, uh, you know, flash forward 15 years or so and Cincinnati will be in the Big 12 and Rutgers will be in the Big 10. Wake Forest beating Florida State. This was the year after Wake Forest won the ACC championship in 2006. Washington beating Boise State. Florida over Tennessee. Unranked Florida State beating number 22 Alabama by 7 in Jacksonville, Florida. Virginia Tech beating Clemson. I I might be wrong. I didn't look this up. I think this is the last time that they actually beat the Tigers. Number 4 Ohio State beating Purdue. Kansas beating somebody, anybody, let alone a ranked team in Kansas State, 30-24. Missouri and Nebraska, a Big 12 matchup. And now we'll move to what I guess I'll call the group of four. This is uh, not the Big East because they got an automatic BCS berth. So it's the other four conferences at the time. We didn't call group of five until later on. So this is the, what, Mountain West, WAC, MAC, Sun Belt, Conference USA, I guess it is five, group of five. Oh, well, they're group of four in the graphics. I apologize. That includes Bowling Green beating Minnesota, like they did this year. BYU beating Arizona, like they did this year. East Carolina over North Carolina. FAU over Minnesota, tough year for the Golden Gophers. Kent State over Iowa State. Miami of Ohio over Syracuse. Navy over Duke. New Mexico beating Arizona. Number 22, TCU beating Baylor, 27 to nothing. TCU over Stanford, Toledo over Iowa State. Yes, things were rough for the Cyclones as well. Troy beating Oklahoma State, UCF over NC State, or sorry, UC, yeah, UCF over NC State, USF over Auburn in overtime, USF also over North Carolina, Utah beating Louisville, and Utah beating UCLA, scoring 44 points in both games, and Wyoming 23, Virginia 3. As far as FCS over FBS upsets, it's led, of course, by the App State over Michigan game. McNeese State beat Lafayette. 
uh, or Louisiana Lafayette. New Hampshire beat Marshall. North Dakota State, yet to be the juggernaut we now know them as, did beat Central Michigan by 30. Northern Iowa upset just a very sad Iowa State team. And Southern Illinois beat Northern Illinois. Now, here's a graphic of the comparisons in the four categories that I talked about. So, in top 10 losses, we have 14 so far this year, seven of them uh, against unranked teams. 2007, 15, but 10 against unranked teams. As far as top 25 losses, that of course includes the top 10 losses that I already talked about, we actually have one more this year, 46 with half of those being against unranked teams, against 45 with 26 being against unranked teams. That's why it was considered so chaotic at the time. And then the deeper we got into the season, the more number two fell. And so a lot bigger teams fell as far as the higher ranked teams in 2007. But if you look at the numbers, it's almost identical. As far as group of four, group of five wins, however you want to call that we have 16 this year we had 18 in 2007 and we actually have more fcs over fbs wins eight to six both of them including against a ranked team the michigan loss in 2007 and the washington loss this year so that's kind of how i decided to try to break this down i have no idea how interested any of you are in on this uh i figured i would look it up because i was curious how chaotic this season is compared to 2007 which we look back on as this untouchably chaotic, ridiculous season. And so far, through the first half of the season this year, not only equals it, in some areas may actually be more chaotic than 2007. So my message to you is, A, don't expect anything. Right now, it looks like Georgia is the best team in the nation. It doesn't look like any team can even come close to them. That is dangerous thinking. Uh, We saw that in 2007 with a two-loss LSU team ended up winning the national championship. You never know what's going to happen, so don't expect anything, and then enjoy the rest of this season, because if the first half has shown us anything, the second half is also ready or due for a lot of chaos. I mean, just look at the Big Ten East. That doesn't even include Iowa out of the West. Just look at the East. Uh, You have Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, and Penn State all still have to play each other. And all of them are ranked in the top 10 at the moment. So a lot of chaos is left, uh, left to go. So undoubtedly, at least in the rankings, a lot of chaos is left. We have four college football playoff spots. Um, I, I... Don't know at this moment who those four teams are going to be. That will become a lot more clear over the next five or six weeks. Um... But yeah, I want you to enjoy the rest of the season because this is kind of a once in a generation type of season. I do believe it was helped by the pandemic last year. A lot of teams didn't play um, by the transfer portal of players moving around um, of just the fact that kids are now being taught and not bred. That's the wrong word, but but trained at a much earlier age to play football and play specific positions in order to get scholarships to college and get a shot at the NFL, more so than they were even in 2007. Technology has just advanced a lot in those, you know, 15, 20 years. So, I don't know. I think it's a kind of an amalgamation of all that, but I don't know if anybody else is interested. If you made it this far, thank you so much. Let me know your thoughts on all this down below and how much chaos... I got the... Sorry, how much chaos do you expect to happen the rest of the way? Let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Click the circle right there in order to subscribe or check out any other videos over there to the right that YouTube has suggested for you. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, until next time.